Okay, so what is a sample library? Well, it's pretty much just a collection of sounds that you can make music with on a computer. And this might be a little confusing because in the physical world, there's no real distinction between sample library and instrument. If you're playing a trombone, for instance, then you could think of the sound of the trombone as being its sample library. But in the digital world, there is a real distinction between sound and interface. So right now, my interface is a MIDI keyboard with 32 keys, but it can make any sound that I want it to through the use of sample libraries. I could make it a trombone, or a piano, or a cow moo, or really whatever. Um, okay, so one example of a sample library is Bit Clavier's various flavors of piano. Um, and if you select from this drop down menu, there's lightest, light, medium, and heavy, with heavy being the most realistic. Um, and there are also some others forthcoming. Um, but in addition to these various flavors of piano, Big Clavier can also work with the specific non-proprietary format of sample library known as sound font. And there are actually a number of pre-installed sound fonts that a user might select to play with a different sound. So there's drums, bass, organ, And also note that many sound fonts have a secondary selection menu to get even more specific about the sound. Yeah, um, so these sounds can be very fun to play around with, but if you start working on an involved project that uses a specific sample library, you might notice that your choice of sound persists when you switch galleries. So I'm going to switch to just a different gallery, um, and we're still on the organ sound. Um, so how can you get around this? Well, BitClavier has a nifty Use Global Samples button that appears when you select a preparation. So I'm going to select this Direct Preparation, and then down in the bottom right here, there's a Use Global Samples button. Um, and by default, this box is checked, which indicates that the preparation I've selected use, uses the sample library um, that you've selected here. Um, but if you uncheck this box and then select a different sound, um, maybe bass, um, and then I switch to a different gallery, so maybe back to the basic piano. Um, uh, yeah, so, and then, and then, um, the choice of sound font doesn't persist when you switch. Um, and just a quick note on saving, so global samples do not save with your gallery, it's more like an overall setting, um, but local samples, um, that is, if this use global samples button is unchecked, um, that will save with the gallery. Um, and I'd also like to note that this button opens up the possibility of creating very interesting instruments by combining different sample libraries. Um, so I have an example here. Um, so, you know, I, I could set this preparation to, um, maybe let's keep it on organ, but then I could set this to something else, maybe bass and then this one to drums. And then I kind of have this complex, interesting instrument. Um. So this is kind of a obtuse and, and strange example, but um, if you thought about it, I'm sure you could make a very interesting um, instrument. Um, and lastly, I just want to mention that you can install your own sound fonts um, for use in BitClavier. And there are loads of free sound fonts available online, but you can also make your own using samples that you rec recorded or found somewhere. Um, so here's a sound font that I made using various samples from my apartment with the free software Polyphone. Um, so it's called Grunge. Um, and um, I, I can use this if I navigate to um, the BitClavier folder, which just as a review is in Applications, 
bit clavier and then um, selecting um, in, inside the sound fonts folder you just drag your sound font in um, and then when I, I open up this uh, drop down menu it should be here um, now remember you kind of have to um, mess around with the use global samples button um, so if, if I want it to play here maybe the microwave and then here I want it to play um, the doorbell 